back. Ryan Burke is back on the defensive line along with goalkeeper or senior Nick Frediani. He replaced the all-section Christian Snatsko in net. But uh, it's eight, nine games are tough. They're tough to call. It's mm-hmm. almost a, a flip a coin for the Plum Mustangs who really much, this is a good turnaround. First playoff appearance for the Mustangs since 2012. Uh, they were last in the section in 2015. Uh, Mario Carino leads the way and Brendan Acutes, a ah. Pro Grass Player of the Month. September. Who's going to head to Northeastern, so he was the Player of the Month. So uh, always 8-9 seems to be a good matchup. You were looking ahead because the first note that I jotted down on Alderdice was the fact that there was the controversy last year when they were forced <clears throat> to go to Peters Township right. to play, uh, which they won that game in double overtime, and then they lost to Kiski, the 14th seed. They were the 6th seed. Uh, Albin Wells... Helped lead Alderdice to their second consecutive title, and they play a possession game. And uh, they came in, then they openly talked about having that chip on their shoulder, even though they won in Peter's Township. They felt disrespected, and probably deservedly so. So, uh, 14 1 and 1, they lost to Cannon McMillan, they tied Plum. Uh, they're on a 12 0 1 stretch heading into the playoffs. Dane J- Jock Jacoman is in goal, uh, Wal, Wal Bachiba. Uh, also helps them in senior midfielder Charlie Axman lead the way for uh, Alderdice. North Hills, by the way, uh, making, I believe, their first ever playoff appearance. Let me just uh, verify that. Uh, no, for the girls' team, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, first ever Indians, three straight playoff appearances. Luke Chucko plays basketball. And interesting enough, he's a kickoff specialist for the football team. He was in this kicking contest, and uh, the coaching staff saw it. Uh, and said, why don't you come out and kick for us? So he also kicks for the football team. Uh, they were in last year. They were 12 seed. Uh, they lost to Penn Trafford, who's the two seed. And it's interesting if you want to look at this, and I'm talking seeding only, two favorite over 15 to Penn Trafford over Bethel Park. 15 is the, the Blackhawks and 7-10, Norwin and Pine Richland, which is a good matchup, by the way. Uh, would be a, ma- a quarterfinal matchup yeah. between... Penn Trafford and Norwin. It's two those top teams two, in Section 4. Those two bang on each other year in and year out in the section. The one change that I had to make is I'm used to looking at the top of the list because formerly Section 1 for those teams. Now i got to go to the bottom of the list to, to find my information. But Penn Trafford uh, won their third straight section title, and they've had a good playoff streak. But last year was their first playoff win. They got to the quarterfinals before losing to Cannon McMillan. They beat North Hills. was their first win since 2005. So... They're in the playoffs consistently, but they haven't had a lot of success. Nick Wagner is good on the back end, along with Ryan Hilty. Um, Travis Momeyer up front is a big goal scorer, and their defense is really, really good. Logan Kreitzberger uh, is a sophomore goalkeeper for Penn Trafford. His brother Austin is a junior up front. Uh, they were in the section hunt again with Norwin. Norwin split with Penn Trafford. Since that, Penn Trafford won 10 straight games. Norwin beat the Warriors one to nothing for Penn Trafford's only loss. Just four losses for Norwin and Scott Schuchter's team. If you're seeing double, you probably are because senior midfielder Cameron Eckbard leads the way. He's a four-year starter. His twin brother Christian also starts at the midfield, so they could switch jerseys and do that Bella twin thing <laughs> if they, they need to. But that's a pretty good team as a as a 7-10 uh, matchup against Pine Richland, who's the third-place uh, finisher. Uh, those games, along with I think the six eleven, are uh, getting increasingly more competitive. I think. Just looking at the uh, real quick, just looking at the brackets. I, you know, I, I like um, where Upper St. Clair is and the fifth seed. I, I think they can do some damage in that quadrant. But the, to me, the, that bottom quadrant: Peters Township, Central Catholic, North Allegheny, Fox Chapel. Very tough. Whew. I agree with you there. Peter Township, the three seed. Uh, they tie and win against Upper St. Clair. Their only loss was, or they tied and split with Upper St. Clair, win and a tie, excuse me. And then their only loss was a two to one loss to uh, Baldwin. Uh, Bryce Gable Hart, Logan Brinsky lead the way, Justin Gamble back in the goal. And Baldwin's only win, that was what you call a head scratcher. Definitely a head scratcher as far as that is concerned. And maybe you look past. Uh, that you can't look past Central Catholic, and I'm not sure Peter Township will not do it, even though Central didn't have uh, their strongest of years. Here's another interesting story. Matt Olin is a kickoff specialist for the Vikings football team. He had a YouTube video. Where he was kicking the ball 60, 65 yards, and 
Terry Totten came out and pointed the bony finger and said, why don't you come play for us, son? So he's got some Division One in test rules. Prowl, uh, the goalkeeper for the Vikings, is Andres Vasquez. Even though they finished at 500, still a pretty good team uh, as Central Catholic. You mentioned Fox Chapel, 10th year for head coach Eric Ingram. 16 consecutive playoff appearances. Runners up four times in that stretch. 01, 03, 08, and last year. But they haven't won a title since 1995. Zane Ingram, the head coach's uh, son, is uh, on the team. Michael Snowball leads the way. Will Tabor up front. Uh, center back Sing Hong Park is back to lead the defense along with uh, junior Jacob Dunn. So uh, I like that matchup, too, with North Allegheny, who comes in as the two seed uh, with an 11-2-5 and five record. So that's pretty good. Not sure you look at five ties as good or bad. It's not a loss, but it's mm-hmm. not a win. So... Uh, that is, a, they are the two team coming out of uh, section one, so that's a good matchup. They're led by Grant Glorioso, and you mentioned Upper St. Clair, who is Schneider is back. He he had the accident last year, so he didn't coach. Their defense is strong. They have a shutout string going on. Mac Dominic leads the way defensively as a goalkeeper <coughs> on offense. It's senior captain Ryan Mertz, Tom Davidson, thirteen seniors. Six of those seniors, Don, had playoff experience in 2013 when they were the AAA state champions. And here's one other tale for anyone who doesn't make it to the championship game. Last year, pretty impressive. Three teams went to Hershey to play for state gold. Seneca Valley, South Park, Sawickley Academy. None of those teams were WPIL champions. So keep that in mind. So I think it it, it speaks of the 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 depth that the 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 sport has uh, has now in this area. It's always been very heavy toward the east in soccer, but I think that uh, the west has caught up. All and right. The, the one cautionary tale about Good. that is Swickley Academy was the only team to come back with a with a championship. So the other teams, but we're know, taking, you're in there. Okay, well, we're at least taking care of business in the True. west. True. Getting there is a key, right? That's right. All right. Boys 3A. Unlike the WPL steering committee this morning, I didn't have access when I did my power rankings to <laughs> To a Montour Thomas Jefferson matchup last night, which Montour beat texted, Thomas Jefferson. So texted me. I have a cautionary. I have a tale. Wait, about I, that. I, I, so you? I could have texted you what? You could have texted me about that game because I knew I had a chance to. Talk well, I to knew him. they were playing, but I had to have my stuff done oh, yesterday. I, I got, got deadlines. Understand? Okay. So, um, but the the steering committee maybe that had something to do with it. I give credit to both teams because a lot of times. When you're about to play a non-section game against another quality playoff team, a lot of those games mysteriously get postponed. So uh, <laughs> give uh, credit to those two teams. Montour won yesterday. Montour is the number one seed. They're champions of Section uh, 2 in 3A, 15-2-1. and one. They will open up against the Trinity Hillers, the number four team out of Section 3, a 7-10 and 10 record, Saturday, 4 o'clock at Montour High School. 8-9 game, Hampton against Gateway. The Talbots, the number two team, tied for second place, actually, in Section uh, 1, 9-5-3 uh, and three record. Gateway, solid season. They finished in third place in Section 4, record of 11-6 and six at Hampton High School, Saturday, 4 o'clock. Belvern and Leopards are the fourth seed. Belvern and champions of Section 3, 13-3 and three record. They will take on the West Allegheny Indians, the number three team out of Section 2, Six, eight, and four. Their mark Saturday on the gold turf at Bel Vernon at four o'clock. Chartiers Valley is a fifth seed. The Colts uh, finished as the runner-up in Section Four, thirteen and four record. They will battle the Knock Knights, the number four team, yep, tied for third, tied for second place actually in Section One. Hampton, Greensburg, Salem, and Knock all finished in a three-way tie. Knock eight, eight, and two. At Chartiers Valley High School, Saturday, 4 o'clock. Bottom of the bracket, Thomas Jefferson. Champions of Section 4, 16-2 record. They are the number two seed. They will battle the Blackhawk Cougars. Two-way tie for fourth place. They won the tiebreaker with Ambridge. Uh, Head-to-head, Blackhawk in, Ambridge out in Section 2. Blackhawk at Thomas Jefferson High School, Saturday at 4 o'clock. Laurel Highlands is the seventh seed runners up in section three 13 and 13 four and one record against one of those teams tied for second in section one greensburg salem nine six and two saturday a five o'clock start 
at the OK Corral at Laurel Highlands High School. Mars is the number three seed. Mars, champions of Section 1, 13-2-1 record, will battle the Ringgold Rams. 8-10 and 10 is the third team out of Section 3. Saturday, 4 o'clock at Mars High School. And finally, the 6-11 game, the Moon Tigers, 12-5, and 5, runners up in Section 2, battling the defending champion, South Fayette Lions, fourth place in Section 4, 8-9-1 record, at Moon Stadium Saturday, that start is also at 5 o'clock. Don't be deceived, though, by that 8-9-1 and one record. When looking at uh, all these teams, you look at uh, not only – I thought they were in a very tough conference. I, I think Thomas Jefferson and Char Valley are two of the best in this classification. And Gateway, as I mentioned, had a good season. But they're out of – section schedule was tough too so i mm-hmm. think south fayette may be a sleeper in that number 11 spot it's funny that you mentioned that i'm going to start there because i had a chance friday night to talk to uh uh coach coolish not the head coach mike coolish his son uh was in the press box and he told me maybe you factor this in uh thomas jefferson won 11 straight to start the season they had some guys nicked up and they were holding him off to the playoffs so they were unsure if they were going to play against Montour. He was leaning to not playing them. So they didn't have uh, guys playing against Montour, but they'll be back for the playoffs. Uh, their only loss before the Montour loss was a 3-2 loss to Chartiers Valley. They've won five of their last six. Uh, this section title, their first since 2008. Uh, ten shutouts on the season. Uh, a, a big-time margin in goals for versus goals against. Cole Lutz is the, the goal scorer up front with Zach Prezizio, or Prezioso, excuse me, Liam Geiger on the back line, A.J. Uh, Mashenko, Colin uh, Bucksock, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a four-year starter in goal. Uh, so Coach Coolish also told me, echoing in, uh, on your thought, don't sleep on South Fayette. No. He said South Fayette's a very good team. So don't be, bece- be deceived by 8-9 and 1 record. I think Moon's very good, too. I think that's going to be a very, uh, very strong first-round matchup. And the South Fayette, by the way, for Rob Eldridge, the defending champions. But I think Montour, with that victory, a deserving number one seed. They've had a, a, a good season, did uh, Montour, uh, under Alex Hobbs, who was a Montour graduate, 12 wins last year in AA. They were section champs. Uh, for this time, this year, for the first time in 10 years, nine straight wins. Uh, they made the semifinals for the second time ever. They had not been past the quarterfinals uh, before getting to the semifinals uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Sean Rose, Mitch Ulisi, uh their goalkeeper is a three-year starter, and Brian Dugan. They had eight appearances since 1999, but uh, some struggles. But uh, I think they get a deserving number one. And here's a uh, uh, another feather for South Fayette. Uh, maybe a head scratching loss for Montour to Ambridge. Quaker Valley is the other loss. They tied South Fayette. You talked about Moon, Graham Eastgate, their head coach. They got a freshman in goal in Connor Suchar and a couple other freshman starters as well, including Jake Plum. Uh, so you've got some freshmen for a team that won 12 5 0. So good matchup for the 6 uh, 11 matchup right there. As far as that goes, uh, Laurel Highlands, pretty good season under Jerry Rogers, 13 4 1. Uh, for the Mustangs, uh, so a pretty good job as far as that goes. And looking to the Mars Planets for Chris Knopf, section champions in a three seed. Just four seniors came back. This is a team that lost to South Bend in the championship match last year, 3-2 to two in overtime, so they've got some experience as far as that goes. Colin Seifert, Corey Ferguson, Ryan McGuire, Shane Lisman, among others, lead the way. Caleb Brake is back as a senior defender. He's also a place kicker. Uh, for the football team. You talked about Charvelli. Nice turnaround, and uh, I guess you're going to give credit to the McKenzie family. Uh-huh. Garrett McKenzie in his third year. Uh, his dad, Dave, who played for the Spirit. His brothers, Derek and Travis, assistant coaches. Uh, they have a big background as far as uh, playing soccer. Garrett and Travis led the team to a WPL title in 2002, but they haven't had a winning season done in seven years, and they hadn't won a section title in eight years. So a nice turnaround for 13 and 4. As far as that goes, Sean uh, Tinney is an All-State senior forward. Caleb Zajcek back in goal. Anthony Molinero gets Chartiers Valley their first playoff appearance since 2009. And uh, you mentioned he'll take on the Knock Knights. It's interesting how this plays out and how you get a read on Hampton, Greensburg, Salem, 
and knock seven three and two in section, which is pretty good. But Hampton went nine five and three, Greensburg Salem nine six and two, and just eight eight and two for knock. So the all overall records don't really stick right. out that much for those teams. For Hampton, by the way, in the eight nine matchup against Gateway, Talbot's first playoff appearance in four years. As far as that goes, you mentioned Bell Vernon. This is what I thought interesting. Uh, Bell Vernon, when it comes to the girls, I'll talk about it. But uh, their only section loss was to Ringgold. So uh, that's a pretty good feather in Ringgold's cap, who finished third in the section. But they have three four-year starters. And this was kind of a build uh, because they struggled uh, in their first two seasons the as freshmen and sophomores. They had just 13 wins combined, 13 wins total this year. So you could kind of see this building up for uh, John Karekis' first section title for Bel- for Bell Vernon uh, since 2010. West Allegheny was interesting to me because they have a little bit of a history uh, being success- successful in a championship game uh, a couple of years ago and struggling this year a little bit to kind of make the playoffs. So it was hard for me to get a good read on uh, really how good the Indians uh, are in this uh, 4-13 matchup as far as that goes. All right, to uh, boys, <clears throat> excuse me, 2A, South Park is the number one C, champions of Section 1, 15-2-1 and two, and record. They will take on the Yawk Cougars, number four team out of Section 3, 6-9 and nine, uh, for Yawk. That game Saturday, 2 o'clock at Thomas Jefferson High School. 8-9 game, the Charleroi Cougars against the Deer Lakes Lancers. Charleroi, the number two team out of Section 3, 12 and 6 mark. Deer Lakes, the number three team out of Section 2, 10 and 4. Saturday, 2 o'clock at Bell Vernon High School. Waynesburg is the fourth seed. Champions of Section 3, 14 and 1. You could question their uh, overall schedule, but when you win 14 of 15, you're doing something right. Uh, Waynesburg will take on Mount Pleasant. The Vikings, the fourth team out of Section 2, a mark of 9, 7, and 1. Saturday, 3 o'clock at Laurel Highlands High School. Shadyside Academy is the fifth seed. The Indians runners-up in Section 2, 11, 2, and 1 record. They will face off against the Southmoreland Scotties, the number 3 team out of Section 3, 8, 9, and 1 mark. Saturday, high noon, at Penn Trafford High School. Bottom of the bracket in 2A, Quaker Valley, the number two seed. Quakers champions of Section 4, 13, 4, and 1, will battle East Allegheny. The Wildcats, the number four team out of Section 1, with a record of 7 and 9, Saturday, 2 o'clock at Montour High School. The 7 10 game is Central Valley against Elizabeth Forward. Central Valley, the number two team out of Section 4, 11, 4, and 1 record. Against EF, the number three team out of Section 1, 11, 5, and 2. A couple teams with 11 uh, wins this season will meet 2 o'clock at Peters Township High School. Freeport Yellow Jackets, the number three seed champions of Section 2, 14, 2, and 1. Their record, they will battle the Beaver Bobcats, the number four team out of Section 4, with a record of 7, 9, and 1. Beaver versus Freeport Saturday, 2 o'clock at Mars High School. Finally, Pittsburgh Obama Academy, the number two team out of Section 1, 11 3 and 2 record, will battle the Riverside Panthers out of Section 4, third place, 7 6 and 2, their record, Saturday, 2 o'clock at George Couple Stadium on the south side. Well, let's start at the top and a deserved number one seed for South Park, John Cantwell. He's done a great job. 15 years there, senior forward Mitch Rule was all section last season. He leads the team. Eight straight section championships. That's just really outstanding. Logan Mannheimer as well. Two losses for South Park to Mount Pleasant and South Fayette, and they tied Obama Academy. But this is a team that lost 2-1 to one in double overtime in the semifinals last year to eventual champion South Fayette. They'll face Yawk. Yawk is a... Uh, Team in the playoffs for the first time since 2013 under first year at coach Chris Duda. Six freshmen uh, start for the Yacht Cougars, so they're going to get thrown into the fire as far as that goes, uh, as far as uh, getting some playoff experience. You mentioned Waynesburg, and maybe 14-1. and one. They have a pair of seven-game winning streak 
they they were sandwiched in front uh, or around a 2 nothing loss to Brownsville. But for head coach Matt Blair, their first section title for Waynesburg since 1996. Pretty good defensive team. Will Bame is a junior on the team. Cody Grando is a sophomore. Uh, their first playoff appearance since 2012. Mentioned their defense. Uh, Jonathan Sakai and Scott Benko have been sharing the goaltender duties. So it's interesting uh, that you see uh, a team do so well with two goaltenders. So uh, do you keep that or do you switch off? Gavin Benson is uh, one of the leading scorers, secondary scoring from Blake Brewer. Their first playoff appearance for Waynesburg since 2012. Like Shadyside Academy is a five seed. Uh, they have a team that's uh, really good defensively. Doran Kozo in the goal set the school record this year with eight shutouts. Ben Ream up front. Uh, they've been in the playoffs a lot, didn't have a lot of success Last year, losing the South Fed in the first round, they were a 13th seed. Two losses on the season for Shadyside Academy to Freeport, and they, they lost yesterday to Kiskey School. For Quaker Valley and head coach Andrew Marshall, uh, they were knocked out in the first round last year. Ian Rogers came back, though. Fritz Ryder, Landon Grant, one of my favorite names, Duff Kleber, leads the way for uh, a Quaker Valley team as the number two seed. Their section mates... Central Valley, uh, the number seven seed under head coach Matt Filippelli. Jack Shearer, senior midfielder, is their top goal scorer. Uh, but they got a pretty good matchup. Again, the 7 10 game is good. 11 5 and 2, Rob Mealy is the head coach of Elizabeth Forward. Senior goalkeeper Ryan Lee for the Warriors was all section in 2015. Captain Dylan DeRoss is also back for a team that did not qualify for the playoffs last year. Dave Tiorski's Freeport Yellow Jackets, pretty good season. Before last season, uh, 2008 was the last time they qualified. So now two straight playoff appearances. First section title for the Yellow Jackets since 1999. Kevin Lynch up front. Bryce Hansby and back in the goal was uh, Austin York for Freeport. And uh, Obama Academy, Nate Boyer. Uh, their goalkeeper is Eli Diamont, Francis Eddie Harvey, Ian Thomas, Alex Woodworth. Pretty impressive record for Obama Academy as the number two team uh, behind South Park in Section Two or Section One in Two A, eleven three and two, so uh, a pretty good record for number six seed. So it'll be an interesting matchup again if seeds hold true. Freeport and Obama in the quarterfinals would be an excellent matchup. All right, let's uh, wrap up the boys by taking a look at uh, Class 1A, Seton LaSalle, the defending champs, the only defending champ uh, that has a, a pretty nice seed. They It doesn't get any better, number one seed. Um, I'd, I'd call that pretty nice. <laughs> champions of Section 4, 17 and 1 mark. Uh, Seton LaSalle will, will battle Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Osh. The fourth team out of Section 1 with a record of 5 and 9. Big Mac Stadium in Cannonsburg, Saturday, 2 o'clock for the Rebels and Chargers. Aquinas Academy is the number 8 seed. The Crusaders finished in second place in Section 3 with a record of 10 and 7. They will battle the Spartans of Quigley Catholic, the number 3 team out of Section 1, 12 and 5 marks, Saturday, 2 o'clock at Seneca Valley High School. Fourth seed is Cardinal World North Catholic Trojans champions of Section 3, 15 2 and 1 record. Very impressive season for the Red and Black. They will battle the Brentwood Spartans, the number three team out of Section 4 with a record of 11 5 and 1, Saturday, 5 o'clock at North Allegheny High School. St. Joe's is the number five seed. The uh, Spartans finished second place to Greensburg Central Catholic, but did hand the Centurions their only loss. 15-2 and two record for St. Joe's. They will face off against Eden Christian Academy in the uh, first round of the playoffs. Eden Christian finished in fourth place with a record of 11-6. and six. Warriors and Spartans Saturday, Hampton High School at 2 o'clock. Bottom of the bracket, Greensburg Central just mentioned them. 15 and 1 champions of section 2 they will take on Bishop Canavan the Crusaders uh, out of section 4 finished in fourth place with a mark of 10 and 8 Saturday 2 o'clock at Norwin High School Freedom is the 7th seed the second place team in section 1 
11 5 and 1. They will battle the Springdale Dynamo, the number three team out of Section 3 with a 10 and 7 record, Saturday, 2 o'clock at Chartiers Valley High School. Sewickley Academy, powerhouse, third seed, champions of Section 1, 14 and 4. The Panthers will battle the Sarah Catholic Eagles, the number four team out of Section 2 with a mark of 7 9 and 2. Saturday, 3 o'clock at Moon High School. And finally, the Bentworth Bearcats are the sixth seed. Bentworth finished in second place in Section 4, 14 3 and 1, their record. They will face the Falcons of Trinity Christian, 9 and 7, the number three team out of Section 2. Bentworth Trinity Christian, Saturday, 2 o'clock at Upper St. Clair High School. Let me just say this I like all four teams from. Uh, and this speaks to strength of section, at least in my eyes, in uh, section four in 1A. Seton LaSalle is the one seed. Uh, Brentwood is a 13. Bentworth is a six. Might be a little low there. 15 seed for Bishop Cannon. And I, I want to thank uh, Ryan Kelly as well. If it sounds like I know what I'm talking about as far as the defending champ, Seton LaSalle, it's because Coach Kelly sent me an email earlier today. So thanks very much for that. Uh, 17 and one. They had won 17 straight before losing the season finale four to one to Short Tears Valley, and this was a team that uh, was stacked with senior forward Chris Stack, if you will, 22 goals. Hmm. And they got a transfer in junior forward Daryl Daniels from Brashear. He leads the team in goal scoring with 36 goals. So very dynamic up front with those two, uh, with uh, goaltender Jake Gigliotti as well. Uh, but they, the only loss mentioned to Seneca Valley, they beat Mercier's Pref, Cardinal World. They beat Bentworth twice uh, as far as that goes. Four straight section titles now for Seton LaSalle. Uh, there are two stories that I'm going to talk about specifically in the Class A tournament, which I think are the two, uh, two of the better stories as far as all the tournaments go. And here's one of them, the number four seed Cardinal World, North Catholic, 13 0 1 in the section, 15 2 1 overall. They lost 2 1 to Seton LaSalle, 1 0 to North Hills. Jordan Wigan is the third year head coach. And they just had two wins last year. So wow. here's why this is a good story. The, the, the team and this program had not had a lot of success. So people around the program were not sure that they think this is possibly their first ever section championship. And it broke a long playoff drought. So that's how. Don Trout and Don Trout in this program has been. So uh, it's a great story. And they're a section champion at number four. So they brought leadership back at center back. They got a freshman in Joe Kearney uh, as far as that goes. Uh, leading scorer. It was their leading scorer as a freshman. And they had no graduation losses, even though they struggled last year. So that's one of my favorite stories. You mentioned uh, St. Joseph. Uh, they had a pretty good year, I think, and they've got uh, one of the more dynamic goal scorers as far as classification goes, and probably the top name in uh, any of the tournaments, and Vincenzo Shiano DeCola. We can call him V. Kelly Robinson always tells me it's okay to call him V. And they're hoping it's V for victory. Uh, last year, they lost in the first round in double overtime to Our Lady of Sacred Heart, but co-section champs last year this is their second straight playoff appearance for Matt Skoda before that their last playoff appearance was 2011 and to mention that they you mentioned it they had a one big victory against Greensburg Central Catholic they only lost for the Centurions Nate Ward Luke Mort Ethan Slight lead the way for GCC they made it to the consolation game last year before losing to Swickley Academy Swickley Academy went on to uh, make the <clears throat> state championship game, and win the title. Springdale and Freedom. Freedom will be the other big story I'm going to talk about. Four straight section wins for Cesario Sanchez's team. Last year, they lost in the section finale, didn't make the playoffs their first appearance since 2012. So four straight section wins. Springdale playing strong. But Freedom has the great story, and the story is their head coach. And as far as uh, that goes, I'm missing it. Want me to sing a show tune? No, I found okay. it. Just had to get my right page My there. threat of a show tune will make you find anything. Colin Williams is in his second year as head coach of the boys' team. He's also the girls' head coach. They're both in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. So he's There's got, a piece in the yeah, paper. About he's the, got yeah. a, a lot of credit to his assistant coaches. He's only had a couple of uh, uh, different uh, of conflicts. But five losses here, and the girls' team didn't get any losses. So 
a great job by Colin Williams, who's from England, so he knows a little bit about the, the beautiful game. Junior forward Santino Guandolo leads the way. Carson Galarno is also a junior. Seven shutouts for freedom. Just two seniors as far as that goes to take on. Springdale Swickley Academy mentioned their run to the state championship, takes on Sarah Catholic. And I think Bentworth is a, is a good team in the sixth seed. I wouldn't be surprised to see Bentworth make some noise. I told you I liked uh, Section 4, Bentworth, under head coach Gary Amos in his 11th year. Uh, Wyatt Selvosky is a junior forward, is a three-year starter. He's their top offensive player. Four juniors have three-year starters. These were section champions the Bentworth Bearcats were in 2015. But uh, I like the team's... Uh, from that section, now you got Bishop Canavan and Bentworth in that scene. The Bishop Canavan obviously has a tougher matchup against number two Greensburg Central Catholic, but I do like the Bearcats in the bottom half of the bracket. It's a field littered with private schools. Only four public schools in this Class 1A tournament. Uh, Bob mentioned a couple of them. Bentworth is the number six seed. Freedom is the seventh seed. Springdale is the tenth seed. And Brentwood as the 14th seed. All right, when we return, we'll take a look at the girls. It's the WPIL soccer playoff pairing show here on the MSA Sports Network. When looking to replace your athletic field, choose ProGrass first in turf. ProGrass has installed over 500 fields in the U.S. Getting the best artificial turf for your field depends on both the product and the partner you choose. That's why architects, athletic directors, and players choose the ProGrass Performance System. ProGrass maintains an active presence in the synthetic turf industry as members of the Sports Turf Management Association and the American Sports Builder Association and is proud to be recognized as the FIFA Preferred Manufacturer. Call ProGrass today, 866 866- Two seven zero six zero zero three, or visit them on the web at www.prograsturf.com. Prograss first in turf. The team at UPMC Sports Medicine doesn't just rebuild wrists and knees; they build better athletes. Athletes at every level who want to get stronger and faster and prevent injuries. Fact is, no other sports medicine program in the region is more experienced when it comes to treating, training, and inspiring athletes. UPMC. The official health care provider of the Penguins, Steelers, and you. Find out more at upmcsportsmedicine.com. Right now, when you refer a friend to open a new personal or business checking account at First Commonwealth Bank, you can earn a generous cash reward. It doesn't even have to be a friend. Could be a relative. Could be a Bruins fan. Could be that guy over there with the weird hair thing going on. It doesn't matter. Refer anyone to open an account and it will really pay off for you. They'll even get a cash reward themselves, no matter who they root for. First Commonwealth Bank, member FDIC. Learn more at a local branch or visit fcbanking.com. People ask what drives me. It's the respect I have for my opponents, the trust I have in my teammates, a coach who treats me with dignity, and a university that has faith in me on and off the field. That's what keeps me focused, why I practice harder, play my heart out. I play to win. I play for Carlo. Tell us your story using hashtag what drives you. Carlo University, a proud sponsor of the MSA Sports Network. Be sure to follow the MSA Sports Network on social media this season for the most up-to-date scores, pictures, videos, breaking news, and links to our articles. You can find the MSA Sports Network on Twitter and Instagram under the handle MSA Sports and at Facebook.com slash MSA Sports. The MSA Sports Network is also on YouTube under the handle MSA Sports WPIAL where you can watch hundreds of interviews with local student athletes, full games, highlights, and more. Whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or our websites, MSA Sports is the place to go for high school sports in western Pennsylvania. For the most complete recap of Friday night's WPIAL football action, tune in on your way home from the game to the MSA Sports Scoreboard Show here on the MSA Sports Network. Hi, I'm Don Rebel. Join me in the MSA Sports Gang for all the scores and recaps from the top games, plus the MSA Sports Roundtable. That's the MSA Sports Scoreboard Show after the game on Friday nights on the MSA Sports Network and at msasports.net. WPIL 
WPIL Soccer Playoff Pairing Show. The brackets are up on our website, msasports.net. Josh Roundtree tweeted them out earlier, so we got you covered as far as that. Broadcast starting Saturday, first round for the boys. And on Monday, first round for the girls. Let's turn our attention, Don Rebel, Bob Orquist, to the girls' playoffs. We'll start in Class 4A. Where the top seed is the Norwin Knights, champions of Section 4, 16 0 and 1. They will battle the Penn Hills Indians, the fourth place team out of Section 3, with a record of 7 and 9 at Norwin High School Monday, 8 o'clock. The 8 9 game, the Upper St. Clair Panthers, the number two team out of Section 2, record of 10 and 5, taking on the Butler Golden Tornado. Third place team out of Section 1, 10, 5, and 2. Monday, 8 o'clock at Upper St. Clair High School. Fourth seed, the Fox Chapel Foxes, co champ, Section 3, a 13 and 5 mark. On Monday, they will take on the North Hills Indians, the number four team out of Section 1, a record of 8, 6, and 3 at Fox Chapel High School, Monday, 8 o'clock. Pine Richland is the fifth seed, champions of Section 1. 11 4 and 2 record. They will battle the Kiski Area Cavaliers, the number three team out of Section 4, with a mark of 8 6 and 2 at Pine Richland High School Monday at 8 o'clock. Canna McMillan is the two seed champions of Section 2, 15 0 and 1. Big Max will host the Hempfield Spartans, the number four team out of Section 4, 4 9 and 2, their record. Big Mac Stadium in Cannonsburg, Monday at 8 o'clock. Seneca Valley, the runners up in Section 1, 12, 5, and 1. They are the seventh seed. They will square off against the Peters Township Indians, finished in a tie for third place, 10, 5, and 2. Marquee matchup in the 7 10 at Seneca Valley High School, 8 o'clock on Monday night. Penn Trafford, Warriors, runners up in Section 4, 14, 3, and 1. They are the number three seed, and they will take on the Alderdice Dragons, the number three team out of Section 3 with a 7-9 and nine record. Penn Trafford High School, Monday at 8 o'clock. And finally, the Plum Mustangs, the runners or the co-champs in Section 3 with Fox Chapel, 11-6-0 and 0 for Plum. They will battle the Mount Lebanon Blue Devils, tied for third place in Section 2 with a record of 8-7-2. and two. Monday, Plum High School at 8 o'clock. Just first-hand thought, I was a little surprised it's been a very competitive Section 1, Bobby, um, and, and yet Pine Richland wins and they get a fifth seed. Yeah, very interesting. I'm sure they uh, have some beef with that, Jody Chimileski, their head coach. How kind of has Amanda Kalen been in, in soccer and basketball in her career? We're going to probably look at her as another yeah. candidate for the Athlete of the Year, but... Uh, yeah, just four losses, and they get a five seed uh, with a, the second team, Seneca Valley, a uh, pretty good squad as well. You mentioned it, Butler at 10-5-2. and two. They didn't qualify last year. And then North Hills in that section making their first ever uh, playoff appearance at 8-6-3, and three. so pretty competitive, but not competitive enough to get a top four seed. I was looking more at the three and four seeds, North uh, or Fox Chapel and Penn Trafford. Penn Trafford beat Fox Chapel one to nothing, and Fox Chapel also lost three of their final four games. So I think you got a flip-flop right there with those two factors in. Uh, Penn Trafford, three losses on the season, two of them to Norwin. And speaking of the Norwin Knights, how good have they been the last two years? You know, Warren Zaper, Karcher, they were the number one seed last year, perfect on their way to the WPIL championship, lost in the semifinals to Upper St. Clair, one loss in the last two seasons. Mm. So that's pretty good stuff. Lexi Colano is headed to the University of Cincinnati. And Sam Wexel in the goal, nine shutouts. And it's pretty good stuff for Penn Trafford, for Jackie Bartko, uh, the two losses to Norwin. Uh, they lost in the first round last year. They feature Mackenzie Angst. Hopefully they're going to want to try to do a little better this year than getting knocked out in the first round. <clears throat> as far as Fox Chapel, Dina DeBaldo, Progress Athlete of the Month. She's a four-year starter headed to Duquesne. So they've got some experience with Brianna Urso and the Dixon Veltry as well. So maybe... We're going to look past the three out of the four games. Nine straight appearances and two straight section championship for Pete Torres' team. Uh, Dave Derrico's squad, Cannon McMillan, um, <clears throat> they can score goals, the number two seed. Annabelle Thomas, Aideen O'Donoghue, Sabrina Bryan, 
Uh, second straight season, Kenny McMillan undefeated in the section. Last year was the first section title since 1991, so don't sleep on the number two seed. Not that anyone uh, would sleep on the number two seed as far as that goes. Plum Mustangs, uh, second year for Caitlin Shookert. Uh Their fifth straight playoff appearance. Uh, they beat Moon and lost to Norman in the quarterfinals last year. Alder Dice is in there. They didn't qualify for the playoffs last year. I mentioned North Hill is a good story because they didn't make the playoffs first time ever. And for Kiskey, uh, second straight playoff appearance, Don, for the Cavaliers. Before that, their last appearance was 2010. They are the 12th seed taking on Pine Richland. So maybe I feel bad for Kiskey because Pine Richland is going to take that frustration mm. out. Hopefully they do. If you're the Cavaliers, you hope they don't. But good point. I think there's a beef for being a section champion and being a five seed. Yeah, Penn Trafford, uh, nothing against uh, section oh, that's four. A good, that's a good Penn Trafford Runners team. Runners up. Too, yeah, but. right. Finished in second. And you get a number three. That's a lot of respect coming your way um, when that happens. All right, girls class three A asymmetrical or did, is that wrong? No, symmetrical. Symmetrical mm-hmm. means what? Evenly round. Well, then it's asymmetrical. No, section it's, three. Oh or yeah, class you're right. 3A. It is asymmetrical. Right. So I was not paying attention to the pigtail game on the bottom. That's right. Seventeen teams. There is one preliminary round game Saturday to see who will be the sixteenth seed. It's the Laurel Highlands Mustangs and the Gateway Gators. Laurel Highlands finished in fourth place in Section 2, a record of 7, 8, and 2. The Gateway Gators finished in fourth place in Section 1, a record of 10 and 8. Gators and Mustangs at Laurel Highlands High School, 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. With the winner getting the top seed, the Moon Tigers, champions of Section 3, 17-1 at Moon High School on Monday at 8 o'clock. The eighth seed, the Bell Vernon Leopards, co-champs in Section 2, 10-6-2. They will face the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars, the number three team, tied for third place in Section 3 with a record of 13-5. That game at Mount Pleasant High School, that is a 6 o'clock start on Monday. Mars Fighting Planets, co-champs in Section 1, 10-2-2, two, two, will battle the Central Valley Warriors, the number 4 team, tied for fourth place in Section 4 with a record of 8-6-1. Monday night, 8 o'clock at Mars High School. Fifth seed, Franklin Regional, co-champs in Section 1, 14-3-1 for the uh, Franklin Regional Panthers. They will take on the Ambridge Bridgers, who finished in third place in Section 4, 10-5-2, their record at Franklin Regional High School on Monday at 8 o'clock. Bottom of the bracket, South Park, co-champs in Section 3. The number two seed at 14-1-2 will battle the Greensburg-Salem Golden Lions, the third-place team out of Section 2 with a record of 8-9-1 at Thomas Jefferson High School on Monday at 8 o'clock. The Mount Pleasant Vikings, co-champs with Bell Vernon in Section 2. Mount Pleasant 11-4-2. Vikings will take on the Hampton Talbots. Hampton, the third-place team out of Section 1, 9-7-1, their record. Monday, 8 o'clock at Mount Pleasant High School. Oakland Catholic, co-champs with South Park in Section 3. Eagles 15-2-1 will battle the South Fayette Lions, tied for Fourth place in Section 4, 9-7-2, their record. Monday night, 6 o'clock at Montour High School for Oakland Catholic and South Fayette. And finally, Montour, the uh, runners-up in Section 4, 12-2-3, will battle the Chartiers Valley Colts. They finish in a tie for third place in Section 3, 11-7, their record, 8 o'clock at Montour High School. Let me ask you a question. Do you find it strange that... Soccer has no tie breaks. Mount Pleasant and Bell Vernon in Section 2 tie for the championship, but Mount Pleasant goes 1-0 and 1 against the Leopards, yet they're co-champions. Yeah, but they're high, They're a higher seed. Still. That that comes into play with the seeding, but as far Does as... a co-section champion get seeded yeah, lower a than a regular check section it's, champion? It's a plaque. It's an additional plaque, is, that's what you're saying? If you get co- co-champs, yeah, you get a plaque. And, and to be honest with you, even in sports that do, like football, where they do break, if, if you're a co-champ, you still get a plaque, even if you're deemed right. the number two right. team Correct. out of that. So, and, and here, it's a great point, Bobby. You got 
Franklin Regional and Mars as co-champs in Section 1. Mount Pleasant, Bell right. Vernon, you mentioned in Section 2. South so Park, Oakland. Catholic, right? and, and those are things that drive these steering committees nuts. When you have co-champions, I mean, how, how do you split them up? If, if indeed, now Mount Pleasant, Bell Vernon is, is the exception, the 1-0 and 1 record, but if it is a split... Do you keep them on other sides of the bracket? Do you try to have them? If you put one at four, do you have to follow up with the other one at five? Those are things that really make it tough on these committees. Well, in the case of Oakland and South Park, no, you keep them on the same side of the bracket, yeah. which is what happened. Oakland Catholic started strong this season under first-year head coach Jim Earl with an 11-game winning streak, but kind of limped into the playoffs at 3-2-1. and one. Not so for South Park and their longtime coach, Shelly Thropp, Nine straight wins for South Park. They lost 3-1 to one to Oakland Catholic, their only loss on the season. They feature Jordan Minda, South Park. She's headed to Slippery Rock uh, to play collegiately as far as that goes. Look at the Moon Tigers. Just a great year for Bill Pfeiffer. Emma Thomas, four-year starter. Delaney Snyder, three-year starter. Possibly the most talented duo in any of the classifications. They were plus 47 in goals scored. And uh, this is a very talented tandem. So uh, look out, deserve a number one seed. Bell Vernon mentioned it earlier. They tie Mount Pleasant, yet they're in an 8-9 game uh, with a 10-6-2 and record under head coach uh, Dave Richmond. Uh, Sierra Lynn is uh, a speedy uh, forward for that team, a senior. And Maddie and Riley Batoni are triplets. I don't think they're sister plays, but uh, interesting fact right there. But that's a, once you get into an 8-9 game, it's a tough matchup. As far as a thirteen and five TJ team with Leah Manning and Julia Saltzman, Bella Sestito as well for Thomas Jefferson. Interesting. We talked about reclassifying the the reclassifications. Mars lost the Franklin Regional. It was the first section loss since October of two thousand and nine. Mm. They had won eighty five straight games in Double A. So maybe that had something to do with it. Still a pretty good team with Taylor Hamlet, Caitlin McKenzie, uh, Sammy Papik as well. Uh, the two year drought. Ended uh, with a double-A title a couple of years ago. Uh, then uh, lost to Mercy Earth Prep. They beat Mount, uh, South Park and lost to Mercy, Mercy Earth Prep. So Mars is the four seed. I like Franklin Regional. I think they have potentially the most dynamic scorer in the tournament in Autumn Velasquez for Rich Garland. Uh, she's just really talented, the senior forward. Um, Sophia Hudson as well. Kala Solomon. Tiffany Joyemi who injured a leg early in the year but didn't uh, affect her for the, the Franklin Regional Panthers. They're an interesting uh, team coming out in this tournament as the number five seed. And uh, for Montour, let me scroll down, the second place team in uh, Section 4 for Lee Koganauer. They beat Bethel Park 3-1 to one and Seneca Valley 1-0. to nothing. So two pretty good uh, resume builders there. Olivia Muha, Muha leads the way. Their primary scorer, Don, is Molly Marcinko. And Mara Hickey is headed to Walsh University. She's the goalkeeper. How do you get to play soccer at the next level? I you just throw 11 shout-outs out there. <laughs> that helps. That'll do it. The smallest tournament of the eight is girls 2A, 12 teams, only three sections instead of the four and all the other uh, boys and girls classifications. So three sections, top 12 make it, or top – Four make it, and thus 12 teams. So four first-round buys. The three section champions and one second-place team won't have to worry about playing on Monday night. They can do some good scouting. Number one seed is the Freedom Bulldogs. They will have a first-round buy, 17-0, and 0, perfect in winning section one. They will be looking at the 8-9 game, the Avonworth Antelopes, Team that they're familiar with in their section. They finished tied for third, 10 6 and 1 record. They on Monday will battle the Derry Trojans, a team that finished in third place in section three with a mark of 10 5 and 1. Avonworth versus Derry, Monday, 6 o'clock at Franklin Regional High School. Fourth seed, the Highlands Golden Rams, the runners up in section two, record of 11 2 and 3, get a first round bye. They will play the winner of the first round game between Beaver and and Valley. Beaver finished as the runner-up in Section 1, a mark of 12-4. and four. Valley, fourth place in Section 2, 7-8-2 and two record. Monday, Mars High School at 6 o'clock for the Bobcats and Vikings. Freeport 
is the number two seed, champions of Section 2, 13-3 and won their record. They get a first-round bye in the quarterfinals. They'll play the winner of the first-round game between Yawk and Quaker Valley. Yawk finished second in Section 3, 10-6 and six record for the Cougars against Quaker Valley. The Quakers tied for third place in Section 1, 7-7-1 seven, seven and one was their mark. Cougars and Quakers Monday, 6 o'clock at Valley, or excuse me, at Plum High School. Finally, the Waynesburg Raiders, champions of Section 3, 15 and 2 record. They get a first round bye, and they'll play the winner of the 6 11 game in the quarterfinals. Six seed, the Borough Buccaneers, third place in Section 2, record of 10 and 6 against the Charleroi Cougars, a team that finished in fourth place in Section 3, also with a 10 and 6 record. Cougars and Bucks Monday, 6 o'clock at Penn Travert High School. So we have uh, two teams in Waynesburg and Freedom who could be seeing familiar foes after first-round buys. Interesting stuff. Here's Colin Williams again, Don. This is his third year for the girls' team. The only perfect team, uh, non- unbeaten, untied in any of these tournaments, possibly the best season in school history. They had a great year last year, and uh, they just got better this year, uh, partially due to a co-op, New Brighton, Folded, and a couple yeah, of the New Brighton right. players came over, and, and was and that was a, a good New Brighton program. Yeah, really good. Uh, Michaela Watkins came over from New Brighton. Her sister Maya was really right. talented for New Brighton. They also got Lindsay Monick coming over from uh, New Brighton. Uh, and in just in case seventeen and zero wasn't good enough, Alexa Schwab, who was one of the top goal scorers for Freedom, out with a broken toe, might be back for the playoffs. Nice to fold a 37 goal scorer and a 94 career goal scorer into your lineup for the playoffs. Uh, talking about the other top seeds, the number two seed, Brittany Greninger, first section ta- championship for Freeport since 2006. They are the number two seed. Waynesburg, the number three seed, they are outright section champions for the first time in school history. And for Highlands, this is just all icing in the cake for the Highlands Golden Rams as uh, they come into this uh, tournament with uh, Mark Duffield, um, second straight playoff appearances after not uh, appearing. Taylor Gunn, by the way, who said this Slippery Rock, uh, leads the way for Highlands. You talked about Avonworth. Emily Paskowitz, 30 goal scorer on the season, so uh, that's a good team and potentially a good matchup should they get past Derry. Uh, the Trojans making uh, their first winning season for Derry in school history. Mm. Beaver and Valley, how about Valley? Here's another good story, Don. They've only been playing soccer since 2002, their first ever playoff appearance for Valley. Huzzah. Dan Apollonia, the head coach at Yawk, his twin daughters uh, lead the way. And the, the other good story, this is where I meant to throw the icing in the cake comment. Crystal Kosecki is the head coach for Burl. Uh, she welcomed a son last week. So oh. their first playoff appearance since 2007 is just icing on the cake for Crystal Kosecki. And she gets the ding. Very she nice. She gets the ding. Congratulations. Um, all right, finally, girls 1A, uh, two preliminary round games on Saturday to determine the 16th seed. It'll be the Beth Center Bulldogs against the Sewickley Academy Panthers. Beth Center finished in uh, a tie for fourth place. In Section 2 with a record of 4-10. and Sewickley Academy finished in third place, 6-8-3 and three, in Section 4. That game, 1 o'clock at Moon High School. And the other preliminary round game on Saturday, Cardinal World North Catholic finished fourth place in Section 3, 4-13. and 13. But in the playoffs, where they will battle Apollo Ridge for the 15th seed, Apollo Ridge three-way tie for third place. In Section 1, a record of 7-6-2. and two. North Allegheny High School, the site of that one between the Trojans and the Vikings at 1 o'clock. Beth Center, Sewickley Academy winner, gets the top seed. The Greensburg Central Catholic Centurions, champions of Section 1, a record of 16-1 and one at Norwin High School, Monday, 6 o'clock for that one. 8-9 game, the Seton LaSalle Rebels, the 8th seed, runners-up in Section 2, 11-4, their record. Battling the Riverside Panthers, the number three team out of Section 3, 8, 4, and 2, the record, Monday, 6 o'clock at Moon High School. Vincentian Academy is the fourth seed, champions of Section 3, 12, 2, and 2, the record. They will battle the Riverview Panthers, one of three teams tied for third in Section 1. Raiders, 8, 7, and 2. 
Monday, 6 o'clock at Pine Richland High School. Our Lady of the Sacred Heart is the fifth seed, champions of Section 4, 11, and 3 of their record. They will face off against the Chartiers, Houston Buccaneers, third place team in Section 2, 8 and 10, their record. Big Mac Stadium, Monday night at 6 o'clock for that one. Bentworth Bearcats are the second seed, 12 and 0, perfect in Section 2, 15 and 1 overall. They'll play the winner of the Cardinal World North Catholic Apollo Ridge prelim game. Monday night, 6 o'clock at Upper St. Clair High School. Mohawk Warriors, 12-4, and runners-up in Section 3. They are the seventh seed. They will take on the Southside Beaver Rams. They finished in fourth place in Section 4, 10-7-1, and their record at Seneca Valley High School Monday night at 6 o'clock. Shadyside Academy, runners-up in Section 1, 12-3, their record. will battle the Bishop Canavan Crusaders out of Section 2, Finished in a tie with Beth Center for fourth place. Bishop Canavan 5-13. and 13. Bishop Canavan, Shadyside Academy at Fox Chapel High School Monday at 6 o'clock. And finally, the Carlinton Cougars, runners-up in Section 4, 12-3-2, will battle the Sarah Catholic Eagles. Sarah Catholic third place or tied for third in Section 1, record of 9-6-2. Cougars and Eagles Monday, 6 o'clock at Thomas Jefferson High School. How do you not look past Greensburg Central Catholic and uh, the job they have done back to back WPIL Class A titles, twelve and 0, 16 and one. They lost in Week One to Saint Ursula from Ohio, sixteen straight wins. And how do you not look at Bailey Cartwright, uh, the son of head coach Brian Cartwright? She's north of two hundred and thirteen goals, two sixteen plus. She's the all time uh, leading goal scorer, and she's also set the state career assist record at one hundred eighteen. You know what that gets you? That gets you to Notre Dame. Mm. So she's uh, just tremendous. Abby Scatell is a senior a mid- midfielder. She's headed to Seton uh, Hill. Shannon Saley, or Sally, excuse me, is a senior defender. She broke her leg in the WPL final last year, so she's got some unfinished business. She's headed to Air Force. Kelly Rosensteel is a senior midfielder. She's headed to Robert Morris. Ten starters came back from last year to a team that made it uh, to the state quarterfinals and won the title. They're just uh, just an outstanding program. Uh, Bentworth features Paige Marshall at 27 goals for freshmen. Jocelyn Timlin uh, also over 20 goals. So interesting, the two freshmen lead the way for uh, the Bentworth Bearcats. Shadyside Academy comes in as the number three seed, and they're a pretty playoff-tested team. They lost 12-3. Uh, they made it to the consolation game uh, last year and won the consolation game 3-2, to two, or lost uh, one over Frieder. Freedom, and then lost to uh, Corn City in the first round of the state playoffs. Looking at the four seed, Vincentian, these are stories I like. Brian Aiken, so they struggled a little bit last year, but he was able to get 20 girls to get some playing experience, and that was a carryover uh, for Vincentian. And they win the section championship with just two losses to Pine Richland and Mohawk, and uh, a 5 0 oh, 1 finish, even though they, they made uh, to the quarterfinals. Uh, Last year, as far as that goes, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, they had a nice turnaround. Section champions, Aisley McCullough leads the way. Uh, the Chargers surpassed their season total in wins and section wins from last season, way earlier in the season. So that's a pretty nice turnaround to to get the number five seed. Uh, Anya and Sophia Carrasco lead the way for Carlinton, a pair of sisters right there for the number six seed. Uh, that's a team that didn't qualify for the playoffs last year. And it's interesting, even though Swickley Academy, if they get past best center, uh, nine straight playoff appearances, and they have a history of being very successful at this mm-hmm. level in years past. And in years past, you would maybe salivate at a Greensburg Central Swickley Academy matchup as this one versus 16, um, maybe not so much <laughs> this year as far as that goes. And two teams, uh, Beth Center, Bishop Canavan, uh, that did not qualify last year. Steve McEnany in his third year for Bishop Cannon, and they're the 14th seed taking on uh, the uh, Shadyside Academy uh, squad. And for Riverview, five straight playoff appearances. Uh, Aaron Joyce, Alyssa Kappa, and uh, Maddie Kadic- Kadich in the goal leading the way for Riverview. Awesome stuff, Robert. Um Again, we sort of touched on the expanded uh, postseason beforehand. All the first-round games for the boys are Saturday, and it's uh, an even 32, if I'm not mistaken. And for the girls, 
they will have their first round on Monday. There are three preliminary round games, two and 1A, one and 3A, that will be played Saturday to fully set up those Monday matchups. It will then go uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday for the boys, Thursday for the girls as far as the quarterfinals. Did get confirmation from uh, Tim O'Malley that uh, a Saturday, which would be October 29th, 29th, will be the semifinals. They do not want to play the semifinals on uh, Monday the uh, 31st because of Halloween. Um, And then they'll come back Tuesday with the consolation games and then the championships Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So it'll be a quick turnaround uh, for the girls. They'll have two days between the first round and the quarterfinals and one day between the quarterfinals and the semifinals. But then, you know, you'll have a little bit of a space there um, as far as the before the championship game if your team is able to make it that far. I don't think that's that big of a deal. Uh, the the quick turnaround from the quarters to the semifinals. No, I, I don't think so. And unless you're unless you're banged up, maybe, or you're in a tough game, you go maybe double overtime, and you're trying to get maybe one of your players back. But I agree, and, and a good job because then it leaves all focus on Halloween night for tricks and treats as far as the playoff pairings go. And that's right, the football pairings. Football. That's right, as opposed to football. That's right. Well, our football playoff coverage will begin Saturday, continue on Monday with first-round action. Check out our website over the next 24 hours. Bob Borquist will be a big part of it. Great job tonight, Robert. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Thanks to Chris Lackner, and thanks to our sponsors, ProGrass, First Commonwealth Bank, UPMC Sports Medicine, Carlo University, Officially Sports, Dollar Bank, Monticello's Italian Restaurant, and Management Science Associates. I'm Don Rebel. Thanks for tuning in. Our brackets are up on the website. Exclusive coverage of the 2016 WPIO Boys and Girls Soccer Playoffs begins Saturday and Monday with first-round action here on the MSA Sports Network.